apart from taking in as much stuff about the Spanish as possible, um, I went to Hidden Door. Um, oh, yeah. now, that was fucking ages ago now. It was like <laughs> September. <laughs> and this is now the 21st is now. of November. Yeah. So I can't, even, I can't remember the date it was in September. But it was like the middle of September. I went to Hidden Door, which was like, like uh, Grant and Gasworks, which... It looked really good, man. Yeah, it's, it was in like a weird... It was like a industrial estate. And there was this old um, sort of structure from the gasworks like looming over everything that was really cool it was like a two uh, stage setup so you know there was always you know was something on at one stage while they got the other stage set up and then it would just swap over so you could you could basically see everything that was on if you wanted to and they had like sort of art stuff there was a, another site across the road and they had like i think it was like the Wee school of art and they had they had their um you know the you know when they their end of year show or whatever, so there's some really cool stuff there, like weird modern art. But yeah, um, it was good. I think I think it was Wednesday to Sunday, but I I just went to Saturday and Sunday. So there was there was you know shit loads of stuff on. I mainly went to see Geffer Geist and Post Called Prom Queen. I think Post Called Prom Queen were on the Saturday early evening. And they had this kind of thing. It was supposed to be like the the countdown to the end of the world or something. Oh, so cool. they had like so they had like a countdown in the background, and um, it felt like like they they were sort of on stage going, "Oh well, you know." It was very normal. Like it didn't <laughs> We've feel had a good like, run. It didn't. It didn't really feel like that dramatic. It was just like, "Oh yeah, there's you know the countdown to the end of the world happening in the background." And it was all it's all very normal. But it was cool. They played. Well, they had they had like they played a lot of stuff from. Um, music for hyper capitalists. Yes, yeah, and they had them. they had guests. They had Empress. They had Miles Better. They had Jackal Trades, um, who came on and was like, "It's megaphone season." And he's going mental. And uh, Dragon's Jaw with Conscious yeah. Root. That was that was probably the highlight. It was absolutely amazing. That's that's a video you sent me. I was I was quite jealous. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was that. absolutely amazing. Like I took I took quite a few. I've got a few videos of post called Prom Queen and and Geist as well. So, I think the first band I saw was they were called Future Get Down, and they were like a sort of they were a bit like Never Not Nothing. They they were like wearing jumpsuits and like it was like heavy you know sort of electronics and bass. And was, they were quite cool, and there were a few you know quite a few other was, you know a handful of our other acts that I saw. And uh, but Geffergeist on the Sunday like. Early afternoon, they they were good as well. Played Graceless, they played Parasites. They also played the new track Orbit, which featured Conscious Root as well, which is like it's like over seven minutes, and a good four minutes of it is, I think, Fiona Little violin. There was there was another singer who, unfortunately, I don't know her name, but I think she was playing violin as well and doing sort of like harmonies and stuff. So there's a good like four minutes of that sort of stuff, which is really cool. And then Conscious Root comes in for the last like three minutes, and it's yeah, a really good track, like really really impressive. And uh, yeah, they had Jack Hinks on guitar as well, which was cool to see yeah. him. So yeah. yeah, really good. Look forward to Hidden Door 2022. And you were at Stag and Dagger. I can tell. So Stag and Dagger was just the other, it was two, two weeks ago, I think. And that was that was a bit different. That was in the city centre. That was in the Cowgate in Edinburgh. And that was just a few venues all around the Cowgate. So it was like Sneaky Pete's, The Mash House, Legends, which is the old Opium nightclub. It's just changed to Legends, which is, a, I think it's like a metal and rock sort of club, which is quite, quite cool. But All right, okay. And there was a couple other ones which I can't remember the names of because I didn't I didn't go to those ones. I only went to a handful handful of them, but I saw some cool bands, a band called Lily and a band called Dictator at Sneaky Pete's. I think Dictator, a band that Robert Carlyle had tipped for greatness. He oh, does a yeah, he does like a does like the Saturday playlist or something on Twitter where he gets people to send them recommendations for songs. And I think he'd I think I think it was Dictator, and he'd kind of tipped them for greatness, but um, they were all right. <laughs> like, and they were good. Like the um, the singer was like, it was all about the singer. Like 
for the most part. Like the singer was really, really impressive. All right, okay. And they, they did, but they did, they did certain songs where he was singing, full on singing, like really going for it. And then they had certain tracks where he was doing more of a sort of speak singing, almost rap kind of thing. And those were the things that, those were the songs that I, I preferred. So it wasn't too taken by their their other stuff. But certainly when they they did a more kind of almost hip hop kind of thing, um, I think they were they were better. So they were good. So. Cheap Teeth and the Wine Society and Cameo Habitat of the Marsh House. They were all sort of post-rocky kind of bands, sort of. Cheap Teeth, probably the best of the bunch. I think, in fact, Cheap Teeth, by the time they finished, they got like a... On their last song, everybody went absolutely mad for them. Like, um, they got like a standing ovation. I know everyone was standing. (laughs) Everyone was standing anyway, but they basically got a standing ovation at the end. Like, it, it it was really good. They were like a mixture of like the Stooges and David Bowie and there was bits of Ramones in there. They had a sort of, the singer had a sort of almost like Transylvanian tinge to his vocals. So it was like Transylvanian noise rock mixed with like okay. classic rock. Yeah, they, they, they were good. Um, I took a, a thing from their Spotify, I think it was, it says that Steve Lamarck described them as like Nick Cave doing the conga. This is... Um, an interesting way to describe them. Uh, and the last band that I saw was uh, was Me Rex, and that was in Legends in a sort of like, almost like an attic stage. It was quite small, and uh, like the crowd was a bit underwhelming. There was only there was only about twenty people, something like that. But but the band were the band were very good. They played a few songs that I wasn't familiar with, and they were quite. Quite a bit rockier than the stuff from from like Mega Bear, mm-hmm. and you know it's a full band: drums, bass, guitar, sort of keyboards. But yeah, really good, and they played a good sort of melody, me- melody, medley of songs from Mega Bear, sort of in the middle of the set. I can't tell you how many songs from it they played because they all just kind of rolled into one. But yeah, they they were they were they were excellent. I've been listening to Mega Bear quite a lot. Obviously, I said in the last podcast that I bought their album, yeah, which came with a you know specially curated kind of playlist. And I think we we're both like, "How's that going to work on vinyl?" But like, you know, it's the CD or version that you get on streaming platforms like Spotify is very different. You know, what I mean, the vinyl is the curated playlist. You know, it's, what I mean? it's, on the it's linear, yeah, yeah. And it's it works good, but it's it's I mean it, it suppose it it does what it says on the tin because it does feel like a very different album, and obviously that that was their plan, you know what I mean to to play each of the what fifty two tracks whatever on shuffle with the idea that you can get an infinite combination of songs and playlists, and it's yeah it's really quite enjoyable, man. Really like it. I saw a thing on Twitter earlier. Someone was like, oh. Me Rex have been fucked over by Adele because um, if you saw the news that Adele had gone to Spotify and said like turn off the shuffle function on albums because you you know that's not the way an artist wants you to listen to their album they want you to listen to it from track one in that order it's you know a, a piece of work that's been curated which you know I agree with in in general. It often is, yeah, I mean, it but often but why is. why remove people's choice to just play an album on shuffle if they want to? I was showing the uh, I was showing the workmate photos of Adele earlier on because I hadn't recognised her. I hadn't recognised how much you know she's obviously lost a lot of weight recently, and his response was that she looked like a man in drag. <laughs> I was it's like, it's harsh, harsh man. That's cutting. That's cutting. Just just before we started recording this, she's. But that's my contribution. <laughs> she's on the TV just now, doing a, like an an evening with, and it's just Adele performing in front of like stars, you know, actors. I think I saw that advertised. It's like the most like privileged crowd in Britain. Stormzy's at it. I saw that. <laughs> See, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but Stormzy actually sings about Adele on one of his songs. I can't remember which one it is, but the lyric is like. I can't remember what the lyric is, but it's some. Is it too big for your boots or something? I don't know. I don't think I could. But you, you still, you still else. listen, you still listen to Adele or, or something like that. Like, I think the basic premise is you're acting all hard, but I know that you sing to Adele. Or <laughs> you know, or he's not too hard, or he's. I don't know. 
Don't know. So it's something along these lines, you know. Yeah. You went to see Kneecap. Yes, I did. <laughs> like about yes, 10 I did. years ago. <laughs> yeah, that was about 20 years ago. But it was at the garage on Soccer Hill Street in Glasgow. Which, and they which were one? Phenomenal. Um, the one beside the ABC. Go to ABC. Isn't there two, though? Is there not like an upstairs and a downstairs or like that? Oh, it was upstairs. The Arctic. upstairs. The Arctic or something. Anyway, it doesn't, doesn't I, matter. They were amazing. Yeah. Absolutely amazing, man. The crowd were absolutely lit. Everybody was bouncing away. Yeah. It was just it was just amazing from start to finish. A really good crowd as well. They ended with H O D and the crowd oh, went absolutely oh yeah. wild. So that's what they did for the wrong core. And the crowd nice. went absolutely wild, man. I'd love to go and see them again. And we are going to see them again. They're playing Glasgow in February. Did you get a ticket for that? We've all got tickets, man. Have we? You yes. This is your lucky day. You've got a ticket. Oh, good man. <laughs> Me, you and Boff. Nice. Got that sounds amazing. Uh, I can't remember. I've, I've got a feeling they're playing the Battlelands, which would be amazing. I can't think of a better venue for a band like that to play, obviously, because, you know, they do play up to the whole Republican, Irish Republican thing. So... <laughs> Obviously, being quite close to Celtic Park and that, that'll go down an absolute treat. <laughs> yeah, I suppose it would, yeah. Yeah, but no, I, they were absolutely amazing, man. Really good. And uh, I am going to see Madness on the 3rd of December. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, that was a, a bit of a surprise. Um, I was speaking to Boff again just the other day, and he's like, it won't be too long till we'll be going like this. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, are you, what are you talking about, man? Are we... Are we meant to be going hill walking? Are we going to go for a walk or something? And he's like, no, we're going to see Madness, man. And I was like, didn't know I was going to see them. But I've got a ticket for that as well. Nice. I'm going to see Pete and Diesel. Ah, right. In, okay. In, they played Aberdeen, the, like, just a couple of days ago, I think. Yeah, they did. I think they played Edinburgh, like, the other week as well. But I think I've got tickets for the Ironworks or something in Inverness. Up in Inversnecke. Yeah, next. I, I can't even remember when it is, like in January, mm. February, April, <laughs> March, I don't know. What early early next year anyway, whenever it is. Uh, the first the first quarter of next year, I think. Um, should probably I've got the cribs in March. I'm going to see the cribs in March. Which mm. it's one of those things you just forget about all these gigs and that that you booked like during COVID. Like during the lockdown, and they just they get rescheduled, and you just kind of almost lose track of it. Yeah, well, I almost forgot about Stag and Dagger. It's like because it had been postponed for like I don't know, like probably eighteen months or something. The Hella Mega Tour, um, the Weezer Fall Out Boy and Green oh, Day yeah. gig, that's been rescheduled for two thousand and twenty-two, but that was originally meant to go ahead in two thousand and twenty. Is that to give them time to write some better songs? <laughs> I'm not going anymore. No, everything's you know. pulled out. Everything's pulled out, man. So, ah, good. Yeah, I don't think I'd go to a gig like that myself. Like, it's just too big. Like, just standing in an arena, like on your own, yeah, be a bit, a bit lonely. Yeah, yeah. I think it's at Bella Houston Park, where it was originally. I don't know where it's. I don't know where it's, they're having it now. I won't be going. I got no. my money back. It's, it's for the best. It's for the best. Although, they, uh, if they play, they play the classic songs, I'm sure it would be a good time. Yeah, and I'm sure they will. Can't imagine you'd go along to see Green Day and not well, see Basket Case or Welcome to Paradise or. Yeah, and in Scotland, Minority. you've run, <laughs> In Scotland, you've run the risk of getting bottled off a stage with uh, bottles full of piss. So you you play you play the the crowd pleasers, don't you? Yeah, yeah. They played them. Um, they played a gig. Was it Woodstock? There was a there was a another big festival at Woodstock in the early nineties. I wouldn't say it was like ninety six, ninety seven, something like that. And people were throwing mud at them, like big clubs, like big cl- clumps of mud. They were absolutely covered, absolutely covered. Yeah. And I think Billy Joel was just riling up the crowd. I mean, if you search YouTube, you'll you'll be able to find it quite easily. I think, I think that it's was kind of a- notorious. Yeah, notorious for being like really poorly organised and like the crowds just like rioted. Like, hi. It's not finished. It's finished. 